So floods are some of the most destructive natural disaster people must endure, often lasting longer and impacting larger areas. Floods tend to be uh, much more costly than other events, both in financial terms and loss of life. Now, flooding destroys homes and properties, cripples transportation and leaves a host of potential diseases in its uh, um, wake. Now, rapidly moving flood water also erode banks and shorelines, then deposit huge amounts of debris um, onto surrounding areas. The cleanup process and cost after a flood are typically as much, if not more, than the cost of the physical damage alone. The economic fallout from even a minor flood often lasts several years. Now, flooding is a natural um, is or flooding is natural for all bodies of water. However, modern expansion alters the landscape and, and, and roaches or encroaches on areas that were once natural watersheds, right? This, uh, along with the fact that modern construction does not absorb runoffs, results in more frequent and more costly flooding while um, levees and modern engineering help reduce effect of flooding there is no way um, to entirely prevent flood so whilst there are things we cannot control or um, we however have full control how we respond when there is a flooding crisis and that is what we are trying to address tonight now please let's hear what you have to say remember you can join the conversation send us an sms or whatsapp to 081 803 you can also tweet at us at way show africa one with the hashtag way show all right, so um, this conversation is very important to have because oftentimes um, it's just like driving on the road, right? And you see people maybe taking a walk or a jog and they're jogging, um, backing and oncoming traffic, right? Every time I see it, I quite kind of cringe because the security the, or the safe thing to do, right? If you want to really be um, security conscious, right? The safe thing to do when you're on the highway or you're on the road, even on the street, even in your, in, your, in your estate, is you're supposed to walk on the other side of the road. So you face an oncoming vehicle. So if there's anything that would happen, you would immediately see it and probably maybe like, you know, avoid it. Because, I mean, somebody had his leg broken because of that, because he was taking an early morning walk at 6 a.m. and his bus driver lost control. And that was how the man lost, you know, his legs. So when I see things like that, I just feel like, you know, there's not enough sensitization that is going on with this. And so when I saw that video, right, it just hit me that how on earth, people have said this thing time and time again, that when you see water, right, that is not when you are thinking that, oh, no, I can't, I can I can you know, because again, this water was moving with really high um, tidal waves, right? So how would you, in your right senses, go into the water? Then again, another thought. How many people are in their right senses? And how many people even understand, you know, these things? And that's why we're having this conversation. Because there's a part of the flooding itself. There's a part of the government. And there's a part of us as citizens. They will send you warnings. They will tell you something is happening. People will still stay in their homes, believing that it's not going to happen to them. And this is not unique to Africa. Because even abroad, when you have all the hurricanes and all of that, even when they do all the warnings, and all, you still see people stay there. Then they will not be waiting for, for people to come and rescue them. But let me hear your thoughts. Well, I mean, when you saw that video, what came to your mind, Uti? And I'll come to Angel. So, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, right? But sometimes context is good. Because let's be clear that flooding is a part of our lives. What we are now discussing is the extent of the flooding. 
because when rain falls, I mean, if we just even take Lagos, take the island where we are, when rain falls, you battle a couple of things. You battle groundwater that's coming, rising up from the ground because this is sand-filled, reclaimed land. You battle the bad roads, so there are potholes and gullies where water sits. You battle a lack of drainage. All of this on a small patch of land surrounded by water on one side. In fact, water on both sides, the ocean on one side, the inlet on the other side. So in truth, what we're talking about when we look at a video like this is the extent of the flooding. Mm. Because if we told Nigerians today that when the floods don't go anywhere, is every, like throughout the rainy season, we'll all just be at home. Mm. So to a certain extent, we've already been cultivated by our environment to venture into the water. It's not like when you look at abroad where there's drainage, there's all of this. So it is atypical for there to be a mass of or a pool of water on a road where we walk through. There are certain parts of Lekina when it rains, people are rolling their trousers Absolutely. up to their knees, <laughs> taking off their shoes, and they're wading through this water. Then you tell that same person that when you see this water, no, just go the other direction. The guy will be like, well, this is my life every day, right? So that's the first problem where contextually it's the norm. Now, what we're talking about is how we define or differentiate this kind of situation where there is a tide and quite a rapid tide, right? Because we're used to it. So there's a gap in that part of the knowledge. This video is a perfect example. It was a needless occurrence yes, yeah. because what happens is there's a group of people. They're all watching it. So he goes into the water and the, the bit of the, at the entrance is not part of the tide per se. The tide is flowing, mm -hmm. you know, across from him. And he thinks, I can go past and it. And guess what? He was just a few exactly. inches away to the... So, yeah. I can go through it. And the passengers jump off as they, they start to feel that it's unstable. And he keeps going. And like you said, he almost made it. But what was more critical for me, and the point, the, the bit of the video that adds to this point that we're making now, is when he first started, it was almost like... Hailing him. Hailing him. So, it was so easy for... Even the people that got off the bike to pull the bike and say, oh, God, stop. Or the people who were, you know, there to say, ah, don't do it. Like, let's go but they were hailing like, ah, let's see what will happen. Let's see what will happen. Then it's a progression of, hey, ha, ha. Then hey. they start shouting, mm -hmm. right? Because he's now caught up in the tide. Mm -hmm. And it's, ah, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. Then they see his head. Oh, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. And next, the head is gone again. The head is gone again. Mm -hmm. So you've gone through this progression where you see... This is the manifestation of the lack of the awareness of the difference hmm. between the day to day and how quickly a small volume of water, because anybody looking at this, in fact, where he first of all got picked up hmm. by the tide, it didn't appear to be as deep as when he then started to flow. So that's the thing with water. You can't tell how deep it is until you are actually in it. And by then it's too late. It's too late. Because when it's flowing, hmm. it takes you. So even if you were able to swim, right you're not swimming against the tide you are going with it there's all sorts of things like we said there could be live wires in there so Erosion. the challenge is real in that when you now talk about this awareness the awareness is just not stay away from floods hmm. but it's the sensitization of the difference as to where the danger is because this is part of our daily lives hmm. i get you i get you i mean i remember when there was a particular time when we had serious issues in the uh, home in shongotedo where the water will get up to my my bonnet level but because that water is still right i mean you, people you will still see the okada riders you see everybody still go through that water so i believe that that was the mindset he had not putting in consideration that there was a flow somewhere mm -hmm. at the at midpoint you know and again you know with water the bikes become lighter Mm. So he felt maybe he could really, really pull oh, his true. bike, you know. Okay. And, and yes, now, you know, weight is, when you're underwater, no matter oh, you how heavy you are, you're, you're lighter, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, so you're lighter underwater. So I am very certain that he kept on thinking to himself that, He oh. probably does it every day. <laughs> so, you know, because <laughs> the passengers got off. Mm -hmm. So technically, the place you were going to, the people you were carrying have come down. Mm. So why didn't you turn back? Why didn't you turn back? Well, let me hear your thoughts, NJ, when, yeah. you, well, when you saw this. Basically, you guys have said it all. There's... Um, 
when I saw this, I was actually quite surprised because this is something that happens every day. Most people do this, um, like Uti rightfully said, there are lots of places even on the island where you just a little bit of rain, not even the normal eight days, one week rain or seven and days rain and the whole place is flooded. Why? Because we have bad drainage, we have bad waste, you know, management systems and all that. So all these things help to contribute to current situation. Now, what what one of the things that people need to sensitize themselves about or information that people need to figure out is what to actually do when these things happen mm. like a simple case like this even a simple home case i've seen um, stories of people who drowned in their own home just because they were either trying to save lives and property you know instead of getting themselves to safety mm -hmm. and then the water came and overtook the whole thing Absolutely. and everybody perished so there are um, there has to be steps to take and I would I would say it's not just the government to sensitize people we should actually get information if you live in an area where you know it's flooded you should actually ask yourself okay if this thing should affect me what should I do what what are some of the things I can do apart from calling people because by the time you're calling people it's already too late mm. no one can come to your rescue you can see that happening in different states where no one can even come to your rescue because either they have to the only way to get to you is through a canoe or that and that would not be able to carry uh, equipment needed to actually help people out but um, you know going back to this video Another thing I noticed is that, like U Uti said, there were a lot of people hailing and everything. There are a lot of onlookers in situations in Nigeria. And it's, it's appalling to a very, very frightening extent. We've seen people get robbed. We've seen people in need of just minor help. Uh, maybe their tire is bad and everything. And we just drive on like no problem. I feel like if this guy perished, it's on a lot of people's, on a lot of people's heads because if you find yourself in such a situation yeah there should be a level of help you can be willing to give a lot of people are there because they know that these things will happen they know that this accidents the road is already blocked so they know that this accidents will happen what happens to even somebody just having a rope a stick that guy went all the way down river i don't know how that uh, water body of water goes but that guy went all the way down river and there were a lot of they people could, nobody could go in to help i'm not saying going into mm. the water i'm just saying that even as individuals there are certain things we can do in terms of even trying to help rather than just being the first to bring out your phone to record somebody get washed away mm. okay i hear you i hear you let me put it in a bit of statistics because now um the minister i just saw a <coughs> report that the minister for um, disaster. I was, what's her name again? Minister. Um, oh, hold on. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. Her name is Sadia Farouk. She has given us a figure. So she said that that as of you know yesterday, on the fourth, um, there has been th over three million two hundred nineteen thousand seven hundred eighty persons affected by this flood in 2022. That there are about 1.4 million 227,370 persons that have been internally displaced, and approximately 2,776 persons have been injured, and approximately 612 people have been killed. 181,600 houses have been partially damaged, while 123,807,000 ,807 houses have been totally damaged. This is the current report because, again, Finally, 176,852 hectares of farmland have been partially damaged, while 392,399 hectares of farmland have been totally damaged. You know, because most times we complain that we do not get data, we don't get figures to work with. I'm happy that these figures have come out. Um, but I want us to go back to the conversation. The reason I'm stating this out is that um, beyond just giving us data and all of that, do we think that the government is doing enough to do what we are doing on this table now today which is helping people understand how to deal and better manage these things because i mean flooding is going on I, and i'm not seeing like a lot of um government people coming out sensitizing people sending out videos sending out audio sending out um what's it called press releases and all of that is because I, I i and i know that there's a disaster something that they're doing i think some funding that they're doing if that is related to this that means it defeats the purpose because again there are some death 
that I feel that can be prevented, right? And I'm not seeing the government doing it. But there's one government that has done something. And when we come back from the break, we're going to show that video because I believe Lagos State government did something. Many, we had to go and, I mean, Uti helped me to fish out that ago. video. Yeah. So it's important that at this time, we start to continuously put that in the consciousness of the minds of people so that they know that this is how you should relate when it comes to the um, flooding. We'll take that video once we come back from the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It doesn't look that deep, so you decide to drive through it. A bad decision. And it may be your last. So, so thank you if you just tuned in to our ladies' night out and we're discussing how citizens can better respond to flooding right in Nigeria. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 4663. You can also see that us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 070 49 that's the number to call 0702500749 now i want the citizens i mean if you can call in i want to hear what you have to say about the government's response you know to you know uh, flooding situations and do you think they're sensitizing the people <coughs> enough and again i want to hear what you think people can begin to do to ourselves because i like what nd had talked about on lucas right it's something we do all the time something is happening you see somebody dying there was just, there's just been an accident and the next thing people are bringing out phones i get the part of wanting to document things you know so that you probably you'll be able to say okay these were the events that happened but there's still also that part because i believe that if at the initial stage of that initial video that we watched that the guy was entering with everybody was shouting don't go don't go don't go yeah you think he would have still gone but they were cheering gone. no you see he would have still gone because the point at which if he was going to stop and i want to refer to this last video that you just played at the very beginning of the video right it, it is just validating what we, we just talked about the puddle looks like what we drive through yes. every day yes it was just static you go in you yeah. come out but if you notice the angle then changed and they showed it from above and then there was a tide and then the car turned and you could see it flowing down so that is where the consciousness is because in this video where the guy had the bike he literally one when the passengers stopped when the passengers got off, he could have stopped. Mm -hmm. When the tide first of all actually picked him up, the first time he could have let go of, of the, the bike. bike. Yes, yeah. right. And then, tried to swim. and then tried to save himself. So there are multiple factors here hmm. that impact this. Where we talk about where the responsibility lies. Now I hear you in that there's a responsibility for the government. Where for me that responsibility lies is one. Given that we understand the, um, will I say the geography and the topography of where we are in certain parts of Nigeria, where we see the flooding in, in, um, in Kogi today um, with all the conversations around dams and you know, the confluence of the rivers, um, and then where we are in a place like Lagos, mm. the island, there's water everywhere. So when you look at the topography now, it's largely flat because you are filling, sand filling, and you're building. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing to actually, because what do we do? There's vegetation. Mm. You plant trees to, you know, soak up the water, to slow down the flow of the water. You're supposed to have like slopes and things. That slope flows and into the of river. Because we ask ourselves the same questions. There's water on your front. There's water on your back. Is it that when we were doing the town planning and building and putting the plans together, there wasn't a collective thought to drain it as to how to drain the water away? Yeah. But of course, we know that's not the case because you develop your 600 square meters. You come next door, develop your 600 square meters. There's a stretch of road. Um, if you, you sort of leave um, in my neighborhood, basically, where the developer that built this stretch mm. did the paving stones, the interlocking stones and finished it and it was flat. 
Now, the next house that came, of course, yeah. they raised it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So automatically, they've created a flashpoint for water, water to pool. We're even still managing that. Then the developer that comes and builds the house at that joint place <laughs> now <laughs> proceeds to raise yes, their... And then they want to put drainage because they've raised the house up so high. Of course, cars now need to drive. So they then created gutters. So they broke mm. the already place where there's a problem to put gutters. So there's a plethora of problems mm. where the government has a responsibility first in ensuring that the town you planning must, deals with must, issues. You must follow the plan, plan planning. The, the latter. The drainage, mm. not gutter. <laughs> there's a difference between building <laughs> digging a hole for water to sit in or actually building a runoff where the water has somewhere Absolutely. to go. Let, let me take a call for our first caller for the evening. Thank you, Norma. You're, you're live. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, this is Norma from Abia State. State. Thank you for calling. Yeah, see, I, I was just telling on that video. Tell you. It, it saddens my heart. It's quite unfortunate. Mm. But sometimes we are the architect of our problem. Mm. Because this guy seen a water that is there's a flood that is washing with such speed. What you're supposed to do is to just allow that war or gather to go. But because he doesn't want to let go the Ogada. And that is why they now ended up being shot away by the flood. So I want to use this opportunity to tell people, once it starts raining because of the climatic change, please don't drive like me in Umaya here. Yeah? Once it starts raining, I will not drive again. I will park one side and make sure wherever that I want to park through, if it is flooded, the flood must come down before I pass through it. Because if you go in because of the speed of the flood, before you know it, you are gone. So people this is a question of government. I will say that lack of planning on the part of government mm. cannot be an emergency on the part of citizens. The town planners need to wake up. And the thing that is supposed to be done at the initial stage, in order to stop this flooding, so be done anyway. Not people losing their lives, hmm. honestly. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Arthur. So I was just going to say that, um, so you've got that part of the government, right? And like what Loma was saying is, you the people, what is also the responsibility? Because this is just what we are talking this about. This is just yeah. sadly poor decision making on the part of the Okada rider. Mm. But like I said, he probably has passed through water like that all the so time. So he just thought this is so like every other water what's that the been through. Because yeah. why didn't he stop? Why didn't he mm. turn around? But now you've taken all these issues because, like Loma was saying at the end there, um, town planning, which is what I was saying. But then we are even late now mm. because yeah. in like a lucky, where do you want to start sloping? Mm. Where do you want to st like? We are all. Even the little sloping that people say, okay, let me try and raise mine. You are creating a problem for, for somebody else, because yes. it is not a, it wasn't planned that mm. way. So yeah. today, how do we start to fix these problems? You that have drains, you know, you know how it is here. Once the rain starts to fall, um, they come and dig the drains, the gutters, and they leave it on the side of the road to dry. Then it eventually it washes back, it washes it back, back into and <laughs> it, <laughs> it washes back into the gutters. So from that responsibility point of view, what are we supposed to do as people? Because a lot of the time, I think the, the point for me or the crux that we want people to take away is, look, if you're waiting for the government, you're on a long thing. Mm. Because the government is dealing with the security, is dealing with FX issue, is dealing with petrol issue, is dealing... See, you and your house and protecting yourself from flood to help you just help yourself, like right? Person, that's what it needs to be. And that's why the topic is so important. Absolutely. Let me take Isaac from Abiyakuta, I believe. You're live. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening, Isaac. Yeah, good evening. It's a, it's a very sad situation we find ourselves in the country. Um, you know, we generally lack management structure. You know, we wait for accidents to happen before we start running around. When you look at that video very well, mm -hmm. besides the government challenges, 
we as a people would also need to be reorientated. The people that were standing there on both sides knew that that road was very bad. The Okada rider obviously was having come in from somewhere else and have no clue how bad the situation was. In the Western world, they would have stopped him before he even entered. But you see, we are, we are a very, we've come to a place where things are so messed up and we get excited when we see things happen, even if they are bad things. You know, so we the people need to be sensitized to love one another and to protect one another. Because if you watch the video, you'll find out that that guy was not protected. Mm. Nobody can give what they don't have. Mm. It's as much as you know you will display. You, you know, but then the government needs to put a lot into preparation for natural disasters. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. You Thank guys you. are doing a great job. Thank you so much, Isaac. You, you know, I mean, I'll come to you, NJ. Um, places in the world have seen people actually... I mean, there would have been like a big cordon, right? Don't go to this yeah. area. Because that's where Isaac is. Because I've seen Nigerians do it. Like if you're driving on the highway, you know we go to Oshun State most times to go see our kids, you know, or drop them in school. There are b really bad spots. So even the people there, they put it as a point of duty to tell you, Madam, you can't go further down this road. You have to go through this way. They, they, they help, right? But I just feel like, you know, these are not responsibilities of people. So the government, I feel the where the government would have come in is identify these hot beds, right? These hot spots. And position people the way you have your... And you see, your emergency response people is not only when there's a building collapse or when there's a, a fire incident or something. Emergency also does not mean that the incident must have happened. It is also preventing those incidences because we've seen t tankers fall and they'll go and quickly sp uh, spray foam on it, uh, foamy water so that it doesn't spark up a fire. So these are the situations that we should also have our emergency response team, right? They would have been on ground there, ensuring that nobody crosses that part until maybe that water has really, really gone down. Then they leave. These are the kinds of things that tells me that a government is proactive. Right. If a government would sit down and say, you know what, these are hot spots for flooding and, you know, there would always be a wave water. I mean, when the Arepo water is released, you know, they were going to state one, you know, that uh, the Long Bridge, you would see the Long Bridge that before you see the water, you will see that it will be at the level of that bridge. Yeah. It means that the people that built that bridge, they were not stupid. They knew the exact water level of that thing before they when built it. Because there when there's no water issue, you would think, why is this bridge? The bridge is useless because there's no water. Mm. But when that water happens, when they, when they release the... You will see the water is at that level of the bridge, like mm. apart with the bridge. So do you understand my point? If we have government that will say, you know what? Ahead of all of these things, there are hot spots where this flooding happened. And they position their men there. Maybe, you know, <laughs> that is also prevent unnecessary death. I'm not talking about properties will be lost. Things will be lost, but the loss of life is really what really, really disturbs me in some of these things. But let me hear your thoughts, NJ. Oh, yeah, you guys have said it all. <laughs> um, you know, there's a place for government in all this. There's a, there's a responsibility for government. Yes, whether it's from the drainage angle, managing waste, managing um, what happens with the gutters and even town planning hmm. all the way there. And then there's the human angle where we also have to even try to even be more proactive mm. in what we're doing. Whether it's when you want from starting from when you actually want to build, mm. actually pay attention to some of these things. Because mm. I've been to some places where <coughs> no, plan. it's very slopey. Then someone, some rich guy goes all the way to the top and builds, you know, raises the floor level That's and so. builds his house. Which means that when there's a flood, Okay. He has already created a problem. problem for every other person. Let, let me take a to me. I think from uh, Agege, if I believe. Meiduguri, oh, okay. Wrote to me from Meiduguri, you're live. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Yeah. Sorry for keeping you. Yes, my name is Oyakali. You are writing me and Ali Meiduguri. Go ahead. Yes, I watching that video this evening. It's a very pathetic situation. <coughs> you understand my point now? It's a very pathetic situation because we don't have an effective human sympathy and feeling. 
Now, the other guy was just driving in and everybody was just hailing him and they were making a video of him. Nobody informed him that where he was going was a quite dangerous. Maybe he's not familiar with the time. Sorry, wrote me. I'm afraid we couldn't hear. Maybe his ears mm. were pressing the keys yeah. on his phone because it was really interrupting. Yes. But Angel, we have a comment quickly. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Have time. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have good evening. Uh, good evening, ladies. The Okada man is greedy. He's va he valued he valued his Okada more than his life. While the end result is disaster, erosion of both the man and his Okada. However, the local government should have a place. It should have placed a no entry sign That's at it. the start point, yeah. which is That's just like yes, what yeah. you said. So, I, can I just play devil's, devil's advocate? advocate. <laughs> of course. Like because, you always do. <laughs> of course. So, I hear you. And there's a lot of sensitization. So, when we come into this season, which is something like what that video, mm -hmm. the animation was, the so I've seen circulars by the Lagos State Sorry, Government. Please, okay. please hold your thoughts. Let me come to Henry, then I'll come back to you. Henry, you're live. Hello, good evening. Hi, good, good evening. evening. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, this video is very, very uh, is a very sorry case, but uh, every citizen is responsible for his safety too. Mm. I've had cases <clears> in which places like this happen or things like this happen, and there are some dead devil in the individuals. They'll be backing people and collecting money to ferry people across these dangerous spots. Mm. In my own interpretation of this video, is not what a lot of people are saying. This man, unfortunately, knew where he was going. You can see across the bank, people are standing. Mm. He's probably ferrying people over there for money. Mm. If you see all around the video, there are people standing. They knew what that place is. But some guys take it upon themselves to collect money from people, to ferry people across this dangerous site. So unfortunately for him, he could not make that trip this time around. So I don't see him as a random or cadre man. I'm seeing him as someone. And if you look at this other side, you see people still standing. So we have some people who want to cross to the other side and waiting for somebody and a cadre man or even somebody can, that, that can pick it back them across. So it's unfortunate what happened. I thought it was safe, but later when I listened to the video, I thought that he, they couldn't hold on to him. But everybody is also responsible for their safety and make wise decisions. Thank then you. when we talk about flooding, a flood like the one that happened in Pakistan, a quarter of the whole country was submerged. Mm -hmm. There's no number of I don't work for government, I'm a private person, but there's no number of government officials that can be in all these hot spots. Mm. Sometimes these things overwhelm everybody, both the government, the community, and everything. Having good knowledge of where you are staying and where to be. When there are some places once it starts raining, I start leaving. Because once you stay in one place and the flood keeps rising, you don't know whether it's going to get to the roof or it's just going to be at your knee level. When I know those areas, I leave immediately. Once I see that everywhere is darkening, not until I'm trapped and then the flood waters keep rising and keep rising and I'm trapped. So government has a lot to do. They need to evacuate the drains. They need to sensitize the community and everybody. But we as individuals also need to know where we are staying, peculiarity of some neighborhood. Yeah. Thank you so and much. Be careful. Thank you. Very valid point. Uti, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I guess let me take the comment first. So this is from Daniel, um, our regular fan. He says, how can Nigerians respond better to floods? In a nutshell, the government is responsible for all, all of this. When funds are released for projects, they do a half job. It's also sad that up till now, we're still talking about flooding in Nigeria. The government don't even care about human lives and properties. They just do things as they like. This alone is very pathetic, disgraceful, and embarrassing. And then he's welcoming back. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I, I, I like um, some of the points that we just I raised because you. those are the things that we're talking about. There is the responsibility. For me, from the government side, I think it's the sensitization. What we tend to do is very reactive. These rains come every year, right? So what, the rest of the year, what are the emergency um, people doing? So yes, like we've seen in the last few weeks, they've released um, communiques around, if you live in this area, if you live in this area, move to high ground. Mm. People don't really have where they're going to move to. 
Mm. Right? So how do you help these people and educate them year round to say, you know what, as you start to get to the rainy season, here are the things that you need to do. Communities, to me, this looks a bit like a flash flood, right? Mm. So if you are in areas where we have assessed and we said, okay, this area is prone to flash flooding, guys, people that live in this area, what do we need to do? Mm. Every every collective, in this, if, we can't, if we don't form anything, we form association. Mm -hmm. Every street has their own red association. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these engagements can happen so that mm. people understand how they can protect themselves. Like you said, you may not be able to protect your property, mm. but at least let's not lose <laughs> lives, life, yeah. right? Mm. So people need to be empowered to say, how, what are the peculiarities of my environment? If you live in Oworo today by the end of Third Milan Bridge, you know there's no doubt it will flood. Mm. What do you do? Do you have a family member you can go and stay with, a place you can go? So we're, we're not getting to rainy season or when this actually happens to react. There are plans in place. So it's a continuous cycle. It's year round. Every year rainy season comes around. We may not have the, um, we have flooding to different extent every year. Um, but we have to be better prepared, not just from the, the perspective of the government, because I really like the comment that he said, look, there are not enough people. Mm. We don't have enough doctors. We don't have enough police. It's now the emergencies. It just <laughs> won't happen. So we all have to be responsible collectively. Absolutely. The phone line is buzzing. Sorry, we apologize. We can't take more calls. But I think we've had a fantastic conversation. And we all can agree that there's a role that we all have to play in protecting our lives. When, when things like this happen, property should not be the one that comes first. I remember what our DJ, God rest his soul, would always say. He said, what does not cost life can be replaced. Absolutely. So it means that whatever it is that you're doing at every point in time, think life first. I mean, if it is your Okada, it could have been replaced. Mm -hmm. But now you have lost your life, you know, for, and it was a needless loss. But thank you so much, ladies. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, NJ. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media platforms at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. Water is a weapon. As you can see, it can kill people. So you have to be very careful when there is any issue of flooding around you. Do not take it lightly. It can be a very serious thing. Now, we'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>